morning everyone, Adam here going over land. We've got Hayley and Joe in the camp having a bit of a sleep in. We've got Larissa at home with her damaged ankle. And we're nearing the end of our eight days on Morton Island. And it's been an incredible week. And it's been incredible for a couple of reasons. The weather has been phenomenal. And we've been super comfortable. Like, we once we got set up, we haven't had to do anything to our setup. And I thought I'd just share with you guys what we've got for eight days off grid to be super comfortable. Just to make it easy for you guys if you're planning a trip, you know, what have we got exactly? Um, look, if you're into more of adventure videos, this might be a bit boring for you guys. But if you want some details of what we've brought, everything we've got, uh, it might be really good information for you guys. So let's get into this week's video. Uh, like I said, we've had eight days on uh, Morton Island, completely off grid. We're actually on day seven, tomorrow's day eight. We're packing up tomorrow. We haven't had to buy a single thing while on the island. No food, no fuel, nothing like that. So I'm gonna run through everything we've had, everything we've got to make our time here just perfect. It's been such a phenomenal week. Uh, there's two kids and one adult this week. So if Larissa was here, we'd have a little bit more food. But apart from that, we've pretty much got everything that we normally take. Uh, we'll probably start with the patrol. So everything, all the tools and all that is in a different video. Uh, check it out on our channel. Just go into the, um, click on our channel, go into videos. There's a video of um, everything we bring everywhere. So if you're interested in all the tools, all the recovery gear, it's in that video. But I'll just run through quickly the gear that we've got for this specific week. Let's go. All right, so you do not need a brand new four wheel drive to have a great time and a great event. So this thing is 30 years old. Last year, completed a lap of Australia. Uh, you need a reliable vehicle, you need a capable vehicle, and that's what this thing is. So on top, we've got a 130 watt solar panel from Solar for RVs. Really good quality, great price. We have not had to take the solar panels off the car. There's two on the trailer as well and chase the sun. We've, we've been self-sufficient with energy the whole time. Got one fridge in the back of the car and we swap power between the car and the trailer for running that fridge. We've got an um, air compressor under the bonnet if we have to put a bit of air in the tyres. We've got a winch, don't really need it on Morton Island. Recovery boards, we've got four in the car, two on the trailer. Definitely need recovery boards. We already helped someone out this week. Um, so that's a must have. Another thing, if you've got a family, really good. Having a shower tent or a privacy tent on the side of your car. We've used that down at the wrecks where the kids can get changed in there out of their wet togs. You can just open the doors up and hold a towel, but I really like having that. Especially with having Hayley with us. Having a girl, they just want that bit more privacy. Awning on the rear, haven't really used it this week. If it was raining, we probably would because we've got the fridge in the back. And awning on the side. We've used that once or twice this week. Now, in the back of the car, we've got the bin bag. Super handy. Uh, nighttime, we put all the rubbish bags in here so the critters and animals don't get into the plastic bag. It's pretty secure in there. We've never had an animal go into a bin bag on the back of the, back of the car. If it sits on the ground, they get in into it. Um, we've had it, Fraser Island, we put the rubbish bag up on the roof rack because there's dingoes. Now in the back of the car, this is where we keep the recovery gear, the tools, all that are in the drawers, the camera gear. The main thing is the fridge and the water tank. So, Morton Island, I don't know if there's a lot of places you can get actually drinking water. There is plenty of water for showers and, and washing up and all that. But we carry a 20 litre water tank. It's from Iron Man. Um, it's shaped as a jerry can, but it's got a recessed part where the tap is. So it doesn't get knocked off and water goes flowing out through the car. So 20 litre water tank, it's always with us. So we go out for day trips, we've got plenty of drinking water. And the other thing is we've got the 65 litre dual zone fridge uh, on the fridge slide as well, which makes it real handy. So that's right, at the end of the week, this thing is still looking pretty full. And there's a good reason for that. We got more than enough meat, because when we packed, we actually thought Larissa was going to come with us. So the freezer's still half full of meat. But last night I emptied the Esky out. 
and we haven't had to buy the ice because what I've been doing with the freezer half empty I've been filling up these little water tanks not water tanks water bottles three of these in the freezer every night and then put them in the esky in the morning and there's three already in there during the day I'll freeze them more and swap them over so that ice water that you have in the esky has been super cold uh, the ice itself lasted four days and then we've been doing the um, the water bottles for the last couple of days to keep it cold all right let's get into the camper what we've got have a look at this beautiful day though it is fantastic here on morton island especially on this uh this calm side the western side it is magic it is sunsets are phenomenal all right camping wise this week we've got the kids have got the double swag the king's double double swag uh it's only the second time we use it really happy with it uh, We've got one of our side walls up, so they've got protection if it rains or from the sun. It's been really good. The kids have been loving sleeping in there. What else we got? We've got the camper. You guys have probably seen the camper. I'll run you through inside there shortly. The kids are asleep in there. Well, they're not asleep. I think mean, they're watching a movie. And the main thing is with this camper is the kitchen. Beautiful kitchen. So, two burner stove, sink, all your utensils. And the big pantry so packing for eight days um, food wise how do you how do you go about that well we just sit down and write down uh, what we might have for dinner each night um, breakfasts you know there's bacon and eggs a cereal banana bread toast things like that and lunches are just random so we sort of write down how many days do a list up of what we might need and then just bring a bit extra so we can we can vary it don't always have what is actually on the meal plan and then we just fill it all up in here long life milk there's some extra um, uh, pancake shakers pasta rice some chips all that stuff all in the pantry pretty easy we always take a dish rack with us, so after you do your dishes, um, especially when you're camping, it's real handy to have somewhere for them to dry, to air dry. So dish rack for you campers, if you can fit one in your setup, mate, it's a game changer, it is. And don't forget things like paper towels, we've got three rolls of them, we're probably gonna use one. Tea towels, toilet paper, soap, uh, fire extinguisher, all that little stuff that you should have on every other trip. Uh, really important for when you're sitting somewhere still for uh, seven or eight days. Now underneath the trailer we have two water tanks. One's a 60 litre, one's an 85 litre. Uh, we've been using that for mainly dishes, for drinking and cooking. Right? We, don't, we haven't been using that for showers. So we've got plenty of water for eight days for, uh, for three or four people. we also got two pots, one fry pan, the billy, the kettle and we've got the camp cube so like i said we've got the camp cube it's a fire pit it's a portable one it's been fantastic i love this thing it's great because all the ashes are in there they're not scattered through the campsite like all these other ones we're actually going to put some water in there put it all in a rubbish bag and go put it in one of the bins so we're not adding to all this black ash all around here and we can have a fire pit wherever we want it so last night we had it in the middle we can bring it up here if we want to cook on it move it all around it's fantastic and like i said we're not leaving a mess and there's no hot coals on the sand where some where some strangers like if we leave tomorrow we don't have hot coals and another kid come into their campsite and walk on it when we got here there was a fire pit in the middle didn't know if it was hot or not so i sort of had to test it with my feet to feel if there's any warmth in there luckily there wasn't but there'd be nothing worse than turning up your campsite and your kids burning their feet on some idiot's fire. Especially if they cover it in sand. It just keeps the heat in there. So, guys, if you're having a fire on the sand, get a bucket of ocean water and cool it all off first before you leave. All right, we've got three camp chairs, one for each. I've been running the um, this recliner from Anaconda, and I've got to say, I really like it. It's super comfy if you want to watch the stars at night you can lean back and look up at the sky uh, if you like me and your back's getting a bit sore and a bit old um, I reckon I prefer to the uh, the traditional style camp chairs only thing is 
They're real bulky when you want to put them away. We can put four camp chairs under the bed. This thing's too bulky to go under the bed at all. So they have to go on our bed. So if your space is limited, they are a bit of a pain to pack, but super comfy. Little side table would be good, but the next chair up with that side table is an extra 50 bucks. So not doing that. So super comfy with that. We've got two gas bottles, one for the uh, stove, one for the Jilka hot water system, which has been running fantastic. There it is there. And we've just, we've just been running three jerry cans. So we've been running up the bulba and getting water every two days. And the kids are having two showers a day. They are. After they go for a swim, they come and wash their um, wash all the salts off. And at night time before they go to bed, have another shower. So this thing's been running really good. Really happy with the Julka. So while we're sitting put for eight days, we've actually brought the double shower tent. We've got the Julka single. We've got the one on the side of the car. But the double one's really good. You've got a wet area to get for your shower and uh, a change room so you can get dressed in there. There hasn't been a lot of bugs, but some places they are full of mozzies, march flies, midges. So it's good to get dressed inside a dry side of the shower tent. Uh, these ones are really good because they don't have a floor either. So all the sand comes out real easy. And the next thing is, now we'll get to the electrical system on the camper. Like I said, it's got two solar panels on the, uh, the roof. The front one mainly feeds to the car. The rear one feeds to our lithium battery. 160 watt panel up there. And we got the iTech World 120 amp hour battery. Uh, we've been off grid for six days now, seven days, seven days. Whew. And every second night I've been running the, uh, the fridge off this iTech World battery. Nearly every night, I think. So it's getting down to about 70% by the morning uh, with that shade in the morning. And by late afternoon, it's at 95%. So it's pretty much sustaining power, no worries at all. Now inside the camper, look, I haven't cleaned in there, so it's a bit of a mess. The kids are still in bed, but I'll give you a quick look what we've got inside there. Oh, it's dark in here too. So first up in there, we've got the toilet. It's been seven days and there's still, we could probably go the whole week uh, without having to dump that. We're gonna dump that today, so we're a bit lighter when we leave tomorrow. Really happy, but if you've got family and you're camping somewhere for a long time or anywhere really remote, there's no toilet. Uh, I swear by these things, I, I think they're uh, fantastic. Kids aren't tracking through the scrub behind us like everyone else has been. It's full of toilet paper, it smells bad back there. We're lucky we got the wind going the right way. Um, they don't have to go through all that mess, they just use the do the business here, and um, yeah, they don't have to worry about all that mess. We've got the kids' double beds in here, the bunk beds. They're not really using them, they're in the sway. Here they are watching a movie. They've got a tablet. We brought one tablet so we can watch some movies during the middle of the day. Uh, we well, got today our... is the day we got our last chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> we got a fan up in here. There's a fan under Joe's bed. And we've also got a uh, portable fan for Haley's bed if she needs it. But it's been so beautiful and cool, we haven't needed the fans. So lighting wise, uh, we've got one light each side of the camper up the top here, you can probably see. Uh, there's one one of the standard lights on the side and one on the uh, rear here and we've also got the hardcore light up here which is really good it changes between orange and white uh, light directly over the kitchen really happy with that light uh, we've got two Roby torches and the lamp which we haven't really needed so the table we've got just a lifetime table you get them from Barnings or Anaconda I think we've got that Anaconda on a sale uh, I actually shortened the legs on it for the kids. Uh, table to me has got to be uh, simple to set up, really quick to set up, easy to fold down and pack really well and sturdy. You don't want a table blowing over in the wind. So I'm really happy with these lifetime tables. I've got an actual older one and we bring the stool from it. That's what that stuff down there is sitting on. Uh, but that old table is really heavy. It's actually too sturdy. So we don't bring that anymore. But great at home for barbecues. A couple of the extra things we brought with the fire pit, we brought some firewood from home, some pine, uh, fire lighters, mozzie cores, a couple of buckets, one for the sink, one for if you catch a fish, one for just random stuff. We've got the inflatable kayak, we've got the boogie boards, we've got all the snorkeling gear, we've got some pool noodles, we've got some fishing rods, the fishing gear. So all those toys, all that swimming gear, we put in a roof bag on the patrol. 
uh, out of the way, it's super convenient. We can take it with us on the day trips if we want and we're not getting salt and sand on the car. It's all contained in that roof bag. So really good. And also in summertime, that roof bag is like a, a second layer of like insulation. It blocks the roof from the uh, sun, keeping the car in the shade most of the day. And it's a lot cooler in there than it would be otherwise. All right, guys, I think that's everything. If you need to, if you want to know anything about any of the gear we're running, just leave us a comment. I'll get back to you. Uh, happy to answer any questions. If you think we've forgotten something that we should bring on trips, let us know. I'm always happy to learn. Uh, we just do this for fun. I'm not a professional camper. Yeah, give us a thumbs up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got an insight of what we bring. And uh, if you're planning a trip, hope it helps out. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to this beautiful morning. Bacon eggs for breakfast. And, um, yeah, just relax. See you guys.